There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to cover an experiment you've done in class. In the last video, we also covered an experiment. In, this, in the last video, we covered the experiment where you set up in cavallic cell, and you measure the electron flow from anode to cathode. In this video, we're going to cover the different experiment you would have done, but also the quantum cell. The dot point says, perform a first-hand investigation and gather first-hand information to measure the difference in potential of different combinations of metals in an electrolyte solution. So there's one thing we have to do. We have to measure the difference in potential of different combinations of metals in an electrolyte solution. So I'll explain what the purpose is. The purpose is to test, these to test the electricity production of different electro combinations. So this is, you can see this diagram here, and I'll explain what that means with this diagram. You might have set up three different types of galvanic cells. In the one, you would have had zinc and copper. Right? So this is here is your zinc anode. This is your zinc anode. And on the other side is your copper cathode. Your copper cathode. Here we might have actually not had zinc. This is supposed to be magnesium. Slightly dark and gray. So magnesium anode. And again, same as beforehand, your copper cathode. Your copper cathode. Now, for example, you might have you might have actually used nickel. This could be nickel. So nickel cathode. And this one is again same as beforehand. Your copper anode. Copper cat sorry copper cathode. And the, this one was not your nickel cathode. So it was nickel anode. I got distracted by the sirens in the background. Right, so nickel anode and the copper cathode. So you would, would have set up this galvanic cell, and I'm quickly going to label the other parts. But if you are confused in terms of why we need all these things, I would recommend to watch one of the earlier videos because we, I cover a galvanic cell and what all the individual parts are. For our salt bridge, we have our electrolyte solution. So Electrolyte solution, electrolyte solution, and we've got zinc sulfate. In this case, again, it could be different types of solutions. Zinc sulfate here, so zinc sulfate. In this beaker, we have copper sulfate in the other beaker. This would be magnesium sulfate in the magnesium half cell. So magnesium sulfate in this one. And the, the colors correspond to the colors of these different ions. These are all ions. Again, this is copper sulfate. And then we have nickel here, nickel sulfate. Okay, the main, most important part when it comes to this experiment would be your different types of electrodes, zinc and copper, with one galvanic cell, magnesium and copper with the other one, and nickel and copper with the third one. And the reason why it's important is because we try to measure the electricity flow, how much electricity flows from, from the anode to cathode. Remember that was that what happens at the anode. The anode is where oxidation occurs. So at the anode is where oxidation occurs. And the oxidation is the loss of electrons. So you're going to have electrons or electricity flow from the anode and it's going to go to the cathode. But it's important how fast this works. That's what we're actually measuring. Not how many electrons or like if electrons flow, but how fast they actually flow. And that's what we're going to measure in this experiment. That's what we've done in the experiment. And the way we can actually measure this is this is something called the reductant potential. See down here we have reductance. And I'll first explain what a reductant is. A reductant is 
a substance that causes another to be reduced to be reduced and this might still be confusing but remember what reduced was reduced was something gaining electrons gaining electrons so a strong reductant is a substance that causes another substance to gain electrons so in this case zinc is causing copper to gain electrons because it loses electrons from the zinc and it goes to copper so zinc is the reductant and it's a stronger reductant than the copper because the electrons flow from zinc to copper in case of magnesium, magnesium is also the stronger reductant than copper because we have electrons flowing from magnesium to copper. So again, reductant was a substance that caused another to be reduced. So reductant is a substance that caused another to gain electrons. In this case, magnesium is losing electrons but it, and it's causing copper to gain electrons. And nickel also loses electrons and copper will gain those electrons. So nickel is a stronger reductant than copper. If we look at this chart down here, this tells us not only if if one is a stronger duct than the other, but we can compare as well. And that the rate of electricity flows, the rate of it flowing, is determined by these um, the order. The further they are apart, the faster it's going to flow. So if we look at for the first one, zinc, we've got zinc, which is right here. So I'll underline that in yellow for the first. So the first one is here, zinc. And we've got copper, which is right here. Now for the second one, magnesium, I'll, I'll use for the second one, I'll use purple. Um, magnesium is right here. And again, copper is right here. So you're going to tell there's a bigger gap. And for the last one, I'll use pink. So three is pink. Nickel is right here, and copper is right here. So one electro was nickel, the other was copper. So if you compare in terms of how, they're, how far they're apart, so again, the further they're apart, the faster electricity will flow. So potassium is a stronger reductant than calcium. Calcium is a stronger reductant than magnesium. Uh, than sodium. Sodium is a stronger reductant than magnesium. Magnesium is a stronger reductant than aluminium. Aluminium is a stronger reductant than zinc, and so on and so on. So that means magnesium is a stronger reductant than zinc and zinc is a stronger reductant than nickel. So we're expecting magnesium here because magnesium and copper they're the furthest apart from the from each other. We're expecting this one to have fastest rate. So electrons move at the fastest rate, whereas um, nickel and copper are the closest together. So with number three, we're expecting this one, to, the electrons to move the slowest. Electrons move slowest. And because zinc and copper so zinc is in between magnesium and nickel. And we're expecting it to be in between. So, um, so the medium, medium speed one. So medium speed for this one here, medium speed. And what I'm going to show you quickly is just an animation that shows that point as well. The movement of, so our volts, the thing that we measure is our movement of electricity. This one would have the highest volts. In your experiment, this one would have your lowest. That means that they move the slowest electrons. And this one would be your medium, your in-between one. Right? So here we can see the electrons, they move move at a pretty fast rate, but still pretty slow. And here with the, the highest one, this is the medium one, the highest one, you can see they're moving a lot faster than beforehand. And the lowest one, they move quite slow. So hope that's 
helps you be able to visualize what happens when you have different types of electrodes. But yeah, so for this, what you need to know is we've really done an experiment that measures the electricity or the potential for flow of electricity. You set up your three different galvanic cells. You tested, you had your copper in each case. So this was your standard one. You had that in every one. Or your reference, um, your reference electrode. And you would have tested copper and zinc, copper, magnesium, and copper and nickel. And the one which was the furthest apart when it comes to reductant. So in case the magnesium is here and copper is here, this one would have had your fastest electricity flow, which is this one here, number two. A zinc and the copper, which were in between, would have been your medium one. And nickel and copper, which were the closest together, would have your slowest one. And I'm going to go into much more detail in terms of why and give you calculations as well in the next video. But this was just a practice that you've done and you would have had values that you would have gotten for each of these as well. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.